Good evening. Hello, hello. Hey. We have a special edition to the Gerald and Yvette Ministries broadcast. We're so excited, but we are going to tag some people and wait for others to join us. And as you can see, we have a visitor in the house. Yes, yes, yes. What's so up? this is Dr. Cubion Pitt. Some of you know her and follow her, but some may be new to her. And she was one of the speakers at the Help for the Healthy conference. Woo -woo. And she is also one of my mentees and has been for quite some time. So we're going to be able to talk about the married and the unmarried today, which is very, very, very exciting. So we're so thankful that you could hola. join us. Hola, hola, hola. And we same. want you to... No, I was just caught up. I was in a... I, I got caught got, up. Got I got caught, caught up. I got caught hey, up. Son. I want you to, you know, share the broadcast. Let's get some things going. Can it's a whisper. <laughs> Can you share the broadcast? <laughs> share the hey, broadcast. Share, share, this is a share. product of a very, very um, powerful week. Very. I mean, it wasn't even just Ooh. a couple of days um, conference. This was like a week long conference. And Every, I mean, like literally, every, every day, my goodness, from the beginning to the end, Jesus. was like power packed. Yes. If you didn't, if you came to the conference, or even if you listened to the con the, the night conference aspect of it, um, all of the speakers, what they were saying, were like on point. I Absolutely. mean, especially for this house. Oh yeah. And for the the mentors that um, that we cover. What God was has been saying to the group and what God has been saying through us has been confirmed. Yes. Affirmed. Um, and reaffirmed. And reaffirmed <laughs> through the men of God that released a word. I mean, like. And so we're wearing our We Were Made For More. I know it's flipped for you, but just so you know, it says Made For, for more. more. You know, we love declarations. So. Today, we thought, well, let's just kind of recap how amazing the conference was. It right. is available at Life Center Ministries. If you don't follow our church, Life Center Ministries, it's not our church. We belong to Life Center yeah, Ministries I get Church. To clarify and we do want to clarify. <laughs> um, so you can follow it and see the evening services. I promise you, it'll bless you. I promise it'll best bless you. And I forwarded the evening services onto my Thank page you. so if you're already on my page you may have seen some of them they are definitely worth taking the time to hear the men of god that that preach the word all through this conference what did you think of it it was phenomenal life changing life changing yeah it was it was awesome and today we got an opportunity to get personal prophetic words which we always end the conferences wow. and events at our church with personal prophetic words for every single person that wow. registered so that's awesome i know that was all the time every time every, time. every so conference cool. every conference. we have the miracle session we activate and then everybody receives a prophetic word so it's an amazing church so if you're not following that ministry mm -hmm. i suggest that you follow especially if you're in an area where you don't get to hear about the prophetic or learn about the prophetic it is really one that will be able to help you able to help you but today i want to talk about not only the married but the unmarried so often we talk about um being jim strong for those that are couples but it is so important <laughs> to talk about the unmarried. Right. I say it all the time as a counselor. I really, really wish I could tap into more unmarried people and let them know what I know now. Because I, I promise you, any married person will tell an unmarried person if I knew now. Well, well, I know now. Ooh, if I knew then what I know now, things would be different. If I knew then what I know now, things would be better. So if you know an unmarried person who is interested in being married, this is the broadcast to tag them in, 
you know, share it with them, let them know all of the broadcasts that we do are helpful to unmarried and married. But this one in particular will kind of maybe break it down for them. So if you have a niece, a nephew, a son or daughter that you know really needs the information and needs to follow our ministry, this is the broadcast for them. This is that. This is, is that this is the one. <laughs> and this is the this is going to be the broadcast that you want to pay attention to because of the insight that you're getting ready to receive, the um, revelation that you're getting ready to see from this woman of God that, that is living it. Yes. That is living it. And she wants to pour into others, just like we want to pour into the singles, the unmarried, mm -hmm. that are preparing themselves. Because God will ask you to do some things Ooh. to prepare yourself that mm, I'm not going to even go into it. I'm going <laughs> to allow... Dr. Cubion to to explain what I'm saying. And some some may want to know how and why do you follow so closely with with what is um, seemingly a marriage ministry, but in re in in retrospect, it's really a ministry of reconciliation. That's and it. God is a God of reconciliation. That's so it. even if you're not married, you need to know to be reconciled to God is all about the healing. Mm -hmm. So even though it is considered a marriage ministry, there's so many things that several unmarried people have reached out to us and have gained from following the ministry, doing the webinars. And I'm always so proud of the unmarried when they really, really tap in. But share share why it's important for unmarried people to tap into, whether it's our marriage ministry or, or another marriage ministry, why that's so important and what can they get out of it? It's so important because marriage shows you your unresolved issues. Ooh. And I grew up in a house with domestic violence. Come on, and come so on. I have a whole lot of residual from that, and I found I noticed it. It came out when I when I met someone and started seeing someone, right. and I had moments of you know what I don't want my marriage to end up like my parents, yes. and I don't want to make my future husband pay for my father's mistakes. Wow! And I'm like I need help, and why wait until I get married for all this mess to come out when I can use my single time to do my inner healing so that I can be a good wife because the enemy, even though God is bringing people together in this season, the enemy is waiting to attack these marriages and just because God put you together doesn't mean there won't be issues. Tell that, wait, oh, no, save no. that uh, no, 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 again, no. wait, because no. that's, that's, that's tweetable, you know, that's, that's repostable, save that again, again. please. Just, just because. because God brought you together, that does not mean you won't have issues or that you're just going to automatically stay together. Right. But, uh, how many times have you, have we said, because I've said it too, I don't ever want to be like my parents. I don't want to do it like Ooh. my parents. And then you find yourself doing Ooh. it the same, same way. It, I mean the exact, the exact same, same thing. You know why? Because you never dealt with the issue. You, we never dealt with the, the getting delivered from right. whatever it is that caused us or separated or renounce anything that has, that has um, been in our bloodline right. that will cause us to act and respond and to do what. Because if you if you if you find yourself if you are a person that talks loud and your and your parents talk loud and all of a sudden you find yourself yelling at your your spouse. Right. Ooh, right. I said I wasn't gonna ever do that, but you never dealt with it. Dealt with it. Then it'll keep it'll keep happening. Yeah. Yes, because it's in the bloodline. Right. We know through understanding deliverance, through understanding how people get delivered and why healing is so important. Our ministry is always going to talk about unresolved issues and getting healing before you can get or before you can really work on your relationship the way it needs to be worked on. on you you know our, our testimony, I had to first get healed before I could truly pray for it. Because right. God said because I was so hurt, traumatized, and bitter that my prayers were soulish. Mm -hmm. All the prayers I was Ooh. praying were really prayers wow. about true. how I could get really what I wanted out of my husband versus praying that God would deliver him. Praying that God would, would find him. That, that he would find God. That that he would get delivered and set free. All my prayers were basically get him because he's bothering me, God. Do this to him because he's doing this to me. You and were he praying really, soulish prayers. Soulish prayers, sure was. You stop, I mean, I girl. felt I was a, a, a professional soulish prayer. <laughs> I can't pray five hours. I was, I mean, I could have got, I was a professional at it. How many of y'all been professional soulish prayers? Yes, because the, the prayers that I was praying 
were basically things that I wanted, I mm. needed, I, mm. I, I. And you have to be mm. delivered from the I Ooh. spirit if you're going to be married Ooh. and stay married. Because you can get married with the I spirit, I do. That's the last I. The I do is probably the last I you really need to concentrate on when you get married because then it becomes weak. I don't think that was a righteous move because it says the prayers of the righteous availeth much. It was and not so righteous. It wasn't, it it wasn't, wasn't righteous. Available. It, 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 it wasn't availing anything. It wasn't, it wasn't that wasn't a righteous move. Right. But when I shifted there you go. Come on. and started praying Come on. more along the lines with what God was saying, you get in line with a righteous then move. my prayers what he heard Abel, look at me. <laughs> hey, Abel, <laughs> much. This, this is me. much. This is much. This Come is on. Much. So tell I'm us doing. more about... Um, one of the things that you did, and I and I know you're open like we are on on our broadcast. You you sought out our ministry. Yes. So tell us a little bit about that. So Holy Spirit had been telling me, "Your flesh must die. Your flesh must die. Your flesh must Ooh, die." Oh. And I had a dream because I was thinking about reaching out to you, but I'm like, "This is a marriage ministry. I don't want to think I'm crazy <laughs> to tell I need marriage counseling because." I don't want my future marriage messed up, and I'm not at that point. I'm not dating, but I need marriage counseling. But after I had that dream where you had prayed for me, the very next day I reached out, and I'm just like, I don't, she might think I'm crazy, but I did. I reached out, and I had the complete opposite reaction that I thought she would, would have. Instead of thinking I was crazy, she said, I have been waiting for you, yes. waiting for a single person. Because God showed me, when he showed me, a, gave me a vision of my wedding day, because he kept telling me, you need to die to your, your flesh. And marriage is not about you. And I finally got it when I had the vision. I'm getting beautiful, getting ready to come down the aisle. Only at, down at the end of the aisle, there wasn't a man waiting for me. It was a cross. Woo! And God was saying that when you say I do, you are saying I do die to myself. Mm. It's not about you, Cubion. But every reason you want to be married is about you and what you want. Come on. My God. And so setting myself up for failure in the future going into marriage like that and so i cried many days yes from holy spirit talking to me from my appointments with you <laughs> <laughs> cried many Ooh, days Jesus breaking me. out of that yes yes it's not about me and that's important too because wow um, when when you said you wanted to break out of that why i was so excited is because number one god showed me that there would be married and unmarried people following our ministry hearing our testimony and getting healed by it so what what made me so excited is you were open to it you were open to preparing yourself so that when you end up in a relationship everything from your past doesn't have to sit there and be a weight on your union now i'm not saying that both parties are going to come to the marriage the same way but even if one party comes to the marriage delivered and set free come on. there's half of of what needs to be done already taken care of because if we're honest most of us get married because we want the spouse to do something for us to Absolutely. do something you know uh, uh, mm. um that we don't have in us, that we don't have around us, they're gonna help me with my finances, they're gonna help me with my, you know, have children, that my, 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 he's gonna meet yeah. my needs, she's gonna meet my needs. Instead of let me get prepared to give myself to this to this union. But if you're in a situation where you are giving yourself, but yourself is not whole, Ooh. yourself oh. is damaged, yourself mm. is traumatized, therefore it becomes harder and harder to make this work. Did we get That's that? Good. Oh, that's good. Did, 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 did we did we comprehend that? I think. I, I mean that that was that was a mouthful right there. True enough. I got shift mouthful. Go ahead. But you know, go ahead, Doctor Cuban. I I want you to continue giving them everything that they need because they hear from us, but we want the we want the unmarried to actually under I mean get this understanding. I want you to get this revelation. That, that Dr. Cuban is giving to you because it is vital. I mean, it's vital for, for married couples it, uh, because what she is saying, if you didn't get that piece when you came into the marriage, you still let's get that piece now. now. Understand, <laughs> understand now that you need to die to the cross. 
You need to find your way to the cross. You need to die to yourself because if you don't understand, and that was one of the hardest things for me to understand because I was a me, myself, and I, and, mm -hmm. and I was an entitlement person. Mm -hmm. And so I focused on me, myself, and I. If I ain't getting nothing out of it, she ain't going to get nothing out of it. If she ain't going to do it, I ain't going to do it. Everything had a condition. So when you operated in a me, myself, and I situation, everything has a condition to it. Yes. And so if, you're, if they're not meeting that condition, then you're not going to meet that condition. If they're seeing something that, that you don't mm -hmm. like, then you're going to end up saying something that they don't like that because you know how to push their buttons. You know how to um, upset them. And you know how to, you know, frustrate that person because you're with that person all the time. Yes. And but God is asking, OK, come into this marriage, not asking what you're going to get out of it. But what am I pouring into it? Yes. What am I bringing to the table and stay in that place? Because you know what that place is? A humbling place. That is a place that I'm saying I'm submitting myself unto you. Just like I'm submitting myself unto God because I'm giving God all of me. Ooh. I'm going to give God all of me. That's what we say when we become saved. We say, I'm God, I'm giving you my all. I'm giving you my all. But when God requires you to do it all the time. Ooh. And so when you're looking at your spouse and when you're preparing for your spouse, are you willing to do it all, all the, the time? time? Or are you willing? Or are you doing it all the time? If you're married, are you doing it all the time? But if you're unmarried, are you willing to do it? All the time, because let me tell you, there will be a test. I heard of, I heard of um, someone speak said this um, this week about um, having a quiz. A teacher, you know, while you're in school, you get quizzes, and it's to see where you are before you actually have that test. And when you have that test, then it, are you going to pass? It? Are you have you studied enough? Have you prepared yourself? Have you prepared yourself? Have you practiced? Mm -hmm. But you know, the, the quiz is the practice. So it's like, okay, I'm practicing how to hold my tongue. I'm practicing how to um, be a, um, a, a, um, a help meet that is suitable. I'm practicing these things. And I'm, if you're unmarried, you're practicing these things with God. That's right. You, you're practicing you're these that's things who, with God. That's who you're married to. And the time to get ready for marriage is not at mm. the altar come on it's come on right come on hold on hold on it's they need that, that, that's after the, after i said i do no, okay let's i'm ready to practice we gotta get mm. people to understand because come unfortunately on. part of the issue is and this is this is no disrespect to anyone's parents but most of us i, I most of us do not have a true idea of how marriage works because unfortunately so many of us grew up in either dysfunctional homes mm -hmm. homes where 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 there was divorce homes right. where there was abuse homes where right. things weren't lined up with god's will things weren't lined up with god's word so we did not really truly get the example that god wanted us to have right what he wanted us to see was a man and a woman having a relationship that lined up with Christ's relationship with the church. Come on. If we saw that day in and day out for 18, 19, 20 years, right. we'd be more equipped to do it ourselves. Unfortunately, so many of us did not have that. So when we enter in, we're, we're, we're going in it almost blinded or, or, or maybe are foggy in, what, in our mindset and in, our, in the things that we've seen. So when you came to us, for, for counseling, really, it was started with yeah. counseling, and I knew immediately. I mean, our first appointment, I was like, okay, this is going to turn into mentoring because I have found a mini-me. I have found someone <laughs> who desires to be delivered for the purpose of marriage. Like, I had to get to that place while we were already married, and I knew how exciting it was if I knew how to get myself delivered like I understood it after we had all of the turmoil, mm -hmm. I knew that you getting that information prior to marriage, how big it was going to be. Wow. And for those that are already married, how big it is, no matter when you get the revelation, because once we line up with God, then he can redeem the time. He can, he can multiply everything that you are doing. Mm. And we're seeing that now. God is redeeming the time. Mm. He's, he's given us the acceleration that we've been looking for Come because we God. dug in to the word and got deliverance. So share a part of some of the things that you got delivered from so that you could prepare yourself. The, the biggest thing mm -hmm. that I was so mad, I'm just like, you can't possibly expect me to do this, God. 
Mm-hmm. You, mama, you said one day that you have to treat him like a king, even if he is acting like King Kong. That's the <laughs> what? That's the uh-uh. no. He got the <laughs> that's what the said. Say that one again. I like that. (laughs) You have to treat him like a king, even if he is acting like King Kong. Every day. King Kong. (laughs) Y'all know King Kong. (laughs) A monkey. And my mind says, Mm -hmm. was saying, no. But God was taking me through this unconditional thing because, like you were saying, Pops. The way I was set up is, well, as long as he's doing right, oh. then I'm going to do these things. And God was like, no, mm. daughter, I have mm. an expectation of you that that is what I expect that regardless of regardless. what your husband is doing. I'm like, my, it's like my mind was getting in a cramp. I'm like, what? Oh. <laughs> I, can't, I, I can't, what? No. Brain freeze. Yes. <laughs> like having a hard time I have processing this oh, stuff God. That, that she was telling me. And I'm just like, what? But it was in line with what God said, even though it went against what I what was what was then my common knowledge, but that's what society says. Right. Mm-hmm. And and to have people work with me, those that I mentor, those that I that I counsel, a lot of times they they get really, really frustrated with me. And I understand that. God made me with thick skin. I get it because it was hard for me every time God said do this and my flesh said the exact opposite. Not right. even something close to what God was saying. My flesh said the exact opposite. And I had to work my way mm-hmm. to line up with God's will. And you were able to start working your way to line up with God's will. Even though you have not officially mm-hmm. gotten married yet. But we are believing God. And now oh, you're yes, in no. position to know, <laughs> okay, I already know what to look for. Mm-hmm. I already know what I've dealt with. I already mm-hmm. know what things I brought in, like like dealing with issues with your father. Mm-hmm. And knowing that ahead of time means your husband, even if you start to do something, you'll mm-hmm. be able to pull yourself yeah. back. We'll have I really, to, we'll, we'll I have really, to pay for it. And, and mm-hmm. I believe that she'll be able to see it. And notice it and recognize it because we've been talking about it. We've been writing about it. We've been reading about it. We've been praying about it. And you've been delivered. So even if you do it out of your natural, you back up off of it. And she'll talk about it. Mm-hmm. She'll have opportunity to talk about those things because she's not. it's not something that is hidden. Yes. It's not something that is suppressed. It's like, okay, this is, this is, who, I, this is who I was. This is what I come out of, mm-hmm. and so that person knows what um, knows what he's going into. And the problem is, most of the time we hide our stuff. Oh, mm-hmm. oh yes. We kind we kind of hide our stuff until we get married, until it's, <laughs> until it's exposed. This is I true. I did you. I did you. I'm sorry. I Stop love hiding you. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but I hid it. I'm not going to lie. lie. I, when we got when we got married, I hid it. I'm talking about I hid the drugs. I did. Mm-hmm. I hid the lies, the lies, the alcohol. I mean, I was like I was a saint because I had re- I had found my high school sweetheart, and I felt that if I tell these things or if I, I let these things slip out, then um, I was going to lose her again. And I knew how hard it was when I lost her the first time. That I would lose her again, so I never said anything. And men get prideful because we won't once we once we hide things. Oh, it's locked. Oh. It's locked like the like Fort Knox. It don't come out. <laughs> so you gonna have to do something to get this thing out, or it, God exposes oh, it. Lord. And when God exposes it, I now it's you. like right in front of your face. So now you have to deal with it. Yes. The problem is. We don't really know how to deal with it because we never had to, because we locked it in for so long, we don't deal with it. And so that was a hard thing for me to have to deal with it with with my wife because now it's in front of her. Right. It's in the face. But yeah. it's it's a marriage, um it's it it puts a wedge in between the marriage, sure. in between the union, between the covenant, because it's always anything that's done in a secret. Is always meant to bring a division oh, at some point and in some true. way. And God, when you get married, it's more about a covenant than a contract. That's true. That's than, true. A, than, a, than that piece of paper. Yeah. Because a covenant is saying that I'm willing to sacrifice. Ooh. Yeah. When you said that that I would I have to take it to the cross, that was a that was a sacrifice. Yeah. Yes. He, he sacrificed himself on the cross for us. And so when we're when we're taking up our cross, we're saying that we're willing to sacrifice ourselves for my future spouse, which is which is what you're doing, and uh, 
um, sacrificing ourselves to our spouse that we are already in in a covenant with. I'm not talking about a piece of paper. I'm talking about a covenant. I'm, I'm a covenant because when we start talking about covenants, that's that's not easily broken. That's not easily broken. But when you talk about just a piece of paper, it makes it easier because society has made it so easy to get out of things because of your, because of our mindset. So. We just attended the conference made for more. We Come were on. made for more. Yes. And when you Fire. think about Everything. in in relationships and in marriage, our marriages were made for more, more. than what we That's see good. in marriages more. right now. Our marriages, our more. families, everything in in our relationships, God has created marriage for way more than what, than what see. we're seeing. What we're Come seeing on. is dysfunction. What we're seeing is divorce. What we're seeing is a lot of separation. What we're seeing is a very unhappy people. people People that are are not satisfied with marriage, they're settling, and Ooh, and the re, and the reality good. is, God, if God would um, put something together, He wants to put it exceedingly abundantly. He He doesn't put things together just for them for us to settle. Right. He doesn't put people together just for us to to get along any kind of way. What right. He wants is for us to enjoy life and it more abundantly. abundantly. Come on, and, and, and yeah. I was not enjoying my marriage abundantly. Mm -hmm. I was I was feeling depressed. I was frustrated, and there was a time for that. So there are people who are in that place, and their mindset is it'll never change. So your mouth is already saying it. Yes. You're, you're prophesying mm, to your prophesying. situation. Wow. Unfortunately, you're prophesying something that God had never intended for you to deal with. So what we have to start doing is prophesying to where God wants marriage That's to be, good, and God That's wants good. marriages to be healthy. God wants marriages to line up with the Word. God wants marriages. To to be in line with the covenant. So we're not talking about just stay for the sake of staying because there's too many people like, well, I'm standing. Yeah. Well, you're standing and you're frustrated. You're standing and you're bitter. You're standing and you're, and you're arrogant you're, because, oh, I stayed so long. And then you become a, con a common victim. All you're doing is so you can tell everybody else that you stayed with this terrible wow. person. Now it becomes all about you. People don't like it, but that's just the way it is. Mm. Instead of saying, I'm staying because I'm an agent of God. I'm Ooh. staying because I'm his secret weapon. Because I'm going to decree. I'm going to declare. I'm going to stand on the word. I'm going to pray. I'm going to prophesy. And God's going to use me to bring this marriage to the right place. Come on, warrior. My God. Yes. Come on. Hallelujah. Teach or teach. <laughs> but that's not just for the married. I want so much to be able to teach people how to do exactly what you're doing, whether you're married. And we say it all the time, whether you're married or, or unmarried. But a lot of times we don't have a person that's willing to say, I've been um, working with this marriage ministry, quote unquote marriage ministry. I'm preparing for marriage. But you're in a, in a better place when you can prepare for something. There is very little that we do now without practice, without certification, without taking classes, oh, except on. marriage. Something that is a lifetime of a relationship. We don't, we're not required to take classes. We're not required to get any, any, any training. But we just go into it. It's something we do every single day. We do it all through the day, uh, ups and downs, and nobody has training to, to do it. And then unfortunately, I'm finding out from my clients, you know, we have people who are going to Christian counselors, and the first thing they say is you need to leave. I mean, that's the, like not, I mean, the first thing they say is you need to leave. That I mean, let's just line some things up. It Because our flesh doesn't want to do it does not mean God doesn't want us to Come do on. it. God is always, let me tell you, right now, especially in this season, let me look at whatever, let me look closely to say this slowly. God is coming after all of the areas that are comfortable. There's all nothing that's going to be comfortable that's going to line up because he's trying to get us to a place where, where the blessings are. And the blessings are in the sacrifice. The blessings are in the obedience. And, and to be in that place, we've got to give up the things that, that, that are pleasing to our flesh. And line ourselves up. We're not going to be comfortable, but we are going to be blessed. We're not going to be comfortable, but he's going to be able to shower us. We're not going to be comfortable, but we're going to have revelation, wisdom, and insight. So we've got to want that more than we want comfortable. We've got to want that more than we want our flesh. Come on. So tell us and maybe some examples of, you know, things you've done with your flesh to make sure you stay lined up. <laughs> so Holy Spirit has me has had me basically practicing to kill my flesh. Wow. Wow. That's good. Practice. 
<laughs> he does. He does. And these people that I've been practicing with, they have no idea, but a lot of it is me having to shut up and be mm. quiet. <laughs> Look at God. <laughs> Look at when God. I to say something. Even at work, you know, he will have me with the, uh, the men there because we're on the level playing field there. Mm. But God will have me to respect and honor him in a, in a practicing way and making me, having me be quiet. Quiet mm. when I want to say something and changing my language and so I, I realized with when I um, gotten came to you all that I don't know help me language right and Ooh, so so many times me. I would just sit there and in my mental roller ducks I'm just flipping through like nope can't say that can't say that nope nope don't say that don't say that and I'm just like oh my gosh I don't have the language right and but I'm telling you my flesh Come has on. been just like slowly, slowly dying <laughs> from not being able to say and just do everything that I want. But right. my marriage will be so much better, especially because I'm such a direct person. Yes. Mm. I can't, oh, I can't talk to my future king. Mm. Not like that. Wow. I think not like that. that man oh, up. Wow. Lord Jesus. And you're so much like me because. Right now, especially, there are so many women that are going to be in the body of Christ in a leadership role with a lot of authority in the spirit realm. And because we have authority in the spirit realm, mm -hmm. we're going to slice up the enemy. We're going to, we're going to, you know, preach and teach and, and prophesy and, and, and be apostles. Mm -hmm. There are lots of women, especially in this season, that God is going to highlight and raise up. But the huge thing that God's been leaning on me about, one of the reasons why he is using our ministry is because he taught me, I don't care how much power and authority I, God is saying this to me, Yvette, I'm the one who gave you power and authority to do what you do to the enemy. But I don't expect you to utilize that same uh, um, mindset in the house. Because in the home, mm -hmm. I placed your husband in charge. I don't Come care on. what he's doing. Ooh. I don't care how he's acting. I don't care what his behavior is. You will respect him. You will honor him. Because honoring him and respecting him is honoring That's me and respecting wants. me. That's what God wants. Come so on. I had to learn how to humble myself, even though... You know, a lot of my leaders were men, so they were, you know, really pushing me and training me and teaching me, but they don't have to go home and change. Come they on. get to go home yeah. and be the leader, just like they're the leader in the church, just like sometimes they're 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 leaders in the in, in ministry. Right. So in our situation as 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 strong women of God, we've got to learn how to balance our authority, mm -hmm. how to balance that because we you know, we we both got several college degrees. We're, we're, we're in positions running in our things. career where we're, thank you, basically <laughs> running things. Chicks. We're boss chicks. You know, Come hey, on. there's nothing wrong with that. And then we have authority. We can cast out devils. We can prophesy. Yeah. We can preach. Mm. We can yeah. do all of that. However, right. mm. you are really working your authority when you know, when you're around your husband, when you're home. You, I mean, I start with a whoop and then I got to, you know, get get it together. <laughs> I, I thought the word submission was a cuss, cuss word. word. <laughs> Come on. Like, and you weren't by yourself. Uh, and, and we There's think, a lot of other people think and submission we think is it's a word. weak word. Yeah. Yeah. When in reality, it's God not. said it's, it's, it shows your strength. strength. To humble yourself because you can. You yes. Could. You could say some Ooh. things and do some things. But is you. it a cuss word when, he, when God says, submit yourself unto me? Mm-mm. -hmm. But we have to have some kind of practice. Yes. Because we're supposed to emulate yep. the um the order of Christ. Yes. Yes. God, Christ. Okay. I mean yes. it's it's an order. It is an order. God is a or a, a God of order. Mm hmm And so if it, if he's asking you to submit, it's not a cuss word. That's right. It, it's something that oh holy holy spirit just gave me some. If you if you get into this this thing called submission. The power and authority that you get out of it, the control that you get, you, you can mm. control, you can control your emotions. Right. Mm. You can literally can control your emotions because you, now you're being led by the Holy Spirit. You are. Because you've tapped into the Holy Spirit to be able to see, hear, and know when to speak, what to speak, how to speak, Man, that's to right. set the atmosphere to speak. That's you will learn all of that. Mm -hmm. And I can tell. And I'm, I, I can tell you, anybody, the Holy Spirit just gave that to me, but then he just showed me that I can remember moments when I watched you do it because it was times when I was trying to try you 
to see if you was going to say the same thing, do the same thing, respond the same way, and you didn't. You gave me uh, love. You gave me a kind word. You gave me patience. I'm like, is this the same woman? Wow. This is not the same woman. Not at all. Honestly, and, and really what it was was submitting to God. That was it. Once, once we submit to God, submitting to a man. Man is so it, you is learn so You learn language, like you said. You learn responses. Come on. And, and honestly, people reach out to the ministry all the time. And, what about this? What about this? What about this? The, the reality is it doesn't matter what the what about is. Right. Because the word doesn't change for various situations. When you open the Bible, it never says... You know, um, pray for those who despitefully use you, except when they do this, except when your neighbor says this, except when they're when they're fornicating, except when they're, you know, except when they've hurt you or whatever. Now, we're not talking about being unsafe. People ask me that all the time. Like, let's use wisdom. You can still be safe and not be out of the will of God. But uh, but outside of that, I know it's hard on the flesh, and I Ooh. definitely know it's hard on, on our natural mind, right. and your friends are not going to like it, you're not going to like it. But right. when you go to God, and he asks you to do something, trust me that he already knows your situation, because I kept saying, God, you're asking me to do this, and I was listing all the things that Jared was doing, and then one night, I was truly listening, he was like, can you stop telling me what my yeah. son is doing, because I'm God, and I already know. I'm, yeah. I'm well yeah. aware of everything you're your 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 husband is doing and I'm still telling you what I want. Now you can make wow. the choice to do it or not do it, but repeating what he's doing to me really was almost schizophrenic. It was almost sort of a little bipolar. It's like like God is like, okay, I'm gonna stop talking, I'm gonna let you keep talking, and then I'm gonna remind you that you just repeated who he was, what he was doing, as if I'm not omnipresent and I'm not all knowing. Mm. I'm all of those things. I'm I'm well aware of what he is doing, but I'm also well aware of my word. And I'm mm. also well aware of my perfect will for your life. Come on. Not just his life, for your life right. and his life. So stop repeating. I get it. It hurts. It's embarrassing. And that's why, again, we go back to getting healed, getting delivered, knowing the word and making sure that you are in position to line yourself up with God. It, it, it becomes difficult and that's why we're, we're counseling. That's why God has us mentoring. We have a, a mentoring group and the mentoring group, I'm so proud of them because they're learning so much about how to fight, not just fight for their marriage, fight for their own deliverance. Fight for their own deliverance, their own healing, to beat down the enemy. Because basically, the enemy is using the marriage mm. to get us out of the will of God. We have wow. to see it for what it is. It's a trick of the enemy to get us out of God's perfect will. To get us out of exceedingly abundantly above all we could ever ask or think. To get us out of alignment with the word. Because no matter what your spouse is doing... If you do something outside of what God asked you to do, you are no longer in God's perfect will. It does not matter who told you to do it. It does not matter how we feel. Now, I'm not saying you're going to hell, but I'm telling you, if God asked you to do something and you choose not to do it, whether it's in marriage, whether it's in ministry, you are out of God's perfect will. That's not my statement. That's the word of God. That's just the will of God. And the will of God will cause you to be submitted to him. That's what Christ had to do. When he said, not my will, he had to give up everything. Everything. Literally, everything. And we call ourselves little Christ until we have to suffer, until Ooh. we have to obey. And that's when he learned obedience by the things he suffered. We don't know obedience a lot of times because we don't want to suffer anything. And I don't want to suffer either. And I'm not, I'm not saying I like it that people have to suffer. I sure don't like it when I have to suffer. I'm sure that no one you know wants to suffer. However... There are things that we have to do to get to the miracles. Everybody wants the healing ministry, mm -hmm. miracle ministry, signs ministry. You, we, we can't even fast good. We can't mm -hmm. even fast for two Come days. On now. We can't even, you know, when someone Come talks on. bad about you, we talk bad back. That's not going to give us the miracle ministry. Ooh. And so marriage oh is, is that mirror. Marriage is a mirror. When, I, when, when Gerald is doing something and it causes me to flip, I know I'm doing that with God. When God asks me to do something and I say no, and Gerald asks me to do something and I say no, it's all the same. 
It is all the same. He becomes my mirror. And when I'm way off with him, I have to realize, oh, Lord, I'm way off with God, too. That's just the wow. reality. I'm way, I'm off. So Come I got to get, 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 get back on. Get back on. I got to get back on. <laughs> so the unmarried, and, and part of that, what, what have you learned most about maybe mentoring, the mentoring program? My God, prayer. Like, you've got to be, um, have your boots on, be prayed up, have on, just like the Word of God tells us to put on our armor. we got to learn how to do that. And that's what is being um, emphasized. And I came in already praying, but I am like, for everybody, you're getting something. Whether either you didn't know how to pray beforehand or you're learning now, or now you're going to a new level. level and yes, you're getting that in that. the boot camps. Mm -hmm. And learning how to use, be specific in using warfare words like the word annihilate that I learned. Like I'm my, using that word. It is, and I'm praying with, like I feel the power when I'm praying. That mm -hmm. is, I would say right now, is the most, the, the best thing that I'm getting out of it is learning to pray and then being able to come on with you in the morning and pray with you and hear you. Like, it, it, cause you come, unfortunately, you like, didn't learn this in church. Come mm -hmm. on. So I'm learning yeah. in SWAT how to how to fight, and then by hearing you how you pray for your king, we're learning how to pray for our king so that my man of God, whoever this man is, this man is covered. This Come man on. Covered. is blessed. I got you, boo. I'm already covered. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. Wherever you now are, you're already good. covered. I, Let I, me tell I you, you, covered, you, you're covered. That You've been good. prophesied over. That You've been good. covered in prayer. You've been the the enemy is already gone. I mean, yes. we're annihilating the enemy, the demons. So he therefore, got a he don't even have to worry. He don't even wow. have to worry. He's gonna know his queen when he sees her because she's been praying for been him praying all along. Already. And you don't have to wait. Because God knows who your spouse is. So when you say, I shut down the enemy concerning my spouse, God knows exactly who that is. Yep. And it's shutting down the enemy concerning yep. her spouse. So and his spirit will know her spirit. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Because she's been all, she's we are spirit already beings. praying. Yeah. And so it's, gonna, already. it's already tapping into yes. the spirit realm. Yes, God. She's already tapped into the spirit realm. I love it. So she's just, all of these prayers are just being built up. Yes. And that person, it, that person is it's coming. Yes. yes, that he's person coming. is coming. Yes, he's oh, coming. Oh, oh, hallelujah. Not only is he coming, but he's coming, <laughs> and half of the things that he was already dealing oh, with have, have, have been Working annihilated on. because we've been praying in the come morning. On. So come on. we just early encourage in you early in the morning, <laughs> setting, setting his early. day up before, before daylight. Ooh, of praying setting for the this day up. Day. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And being so, God in the early early do morning. That's right. <laughs> yes, my God. It's been it's been amazing. So would you like to share one? last thing um, yes. with the people I want to I want you to be able to do that so if you're not following Dr. Cubion Pitts we encourage you to follow her she's you know totally aligned with with our ministry um, it, and married people follow her as well because she just has Amazing. some nuggets she's a recent author she's released yes. and published her first book and workbook she teaches classes I told you she's sort of like a mini me like we you know got books workbooks we're teaching classes we're doing stuff online she does counseling uh, she does coaching just like just, a lot of the same things who I do because I can't I cannot not help everyone although I would love to so God is literally causing me to to reproduce reproducers which I is which is one. really the motto of our church everybody that has a gift has to be able to impart into someone else Come and on. allow them to grow in their own way and in their own ministry and I love to teach I love to train I love to impart we we love what we do so Again, we have um, the boot camp in Tallahassee, you know, coming up this Friday. Oh, my goodness. I can't believe it's right. It's Ooh. right up on us. If you're anywhere in the Tallahassee, Florida area, or if you know of people in that area, go to our website, get the information about our boot camps. You'll learn how to pray. You'll learn how to decree, declare, change the atmosphere in your house. We're going to be in North Carolina next week. We're going to be in North Carolina uh, next no, week, next month, next sorry. Month. <laughs> North Carolina next month in October. We've got some other places we're going to be. Uh, we have some information on our website. And, and you all are the first to know we're doing a one-week special on our webinars. We have six webinars on our website. 
They each have different topics and different trainings that I've done in the past. If you've not done one of our webinars, now if you've already taken all six of the webinars, you already have them. But for those who have never had webinars, we have training on you know being delivered from body language. That's helped me to number all, oh, all, yes. all the way one. Um, healing as, from the help me perspective, how to change the atmosphere of your home, how to help um, break generational curses and marriage breaking curses. Each each webinar has different topics but we are doing a special most um, most our uh, regular price is $19.99 each webinar but for this week only so please if you see this after a week um please don't ask me are they still and on today sale? is Sunday today's Sunday so we're gonna go till next till next Saturday evening next Saturday evening we are doing two okay. webinars for $25 okay. two webinar today's Saturday right yeah, yeah. yeah. so today's Saturday <laughs> We'll go through next Saturday. See, he just gave you an extra day. Two webinars for $25. You just have to tell us which month you would like, and you'll pay $25. Inbox me if you if you feel like, you know what, I want to try two webinars and tell it, tell it. Now, don't order them online. You got to inbox me because if you order them online, they're going to be regular price. So that means you got to inbox me at Yvette Benton. And we will get you set up. We'll let you choose two webinars for $25. Normally, that would be almost $40. So you're getting a deal, especially if you've never tried the webinars. So give us a closing word. Healing helps your hearing. Yes, God. You hear, we hear and see situations for who we are and what we've been through. And so healing is going to help you to hear your spouse, what they're saying. So for example, if you've dealt with domestic violence, you are, you hear and see through the lens of that trauma that you've been through yes, God. that came up in a session that I had with you in the counseling early on when I had met a man and he was an alpha male, mm -hmm. it reminded me of my father and he was triggering things. And I remember you telling me that there wasn't anything wrong with um, something that he said and it was probably me. Mm -hmm. And so when I found that healing helps your hearing, if you've dealt with a lot of rejection, right. you might find that they're telling you, no, I don't want to go to that restaurant, but you feel rejected. Right. Healing helps your hearing. It's necessary. Wow. And so if going into the marriage, you want your healing. And if you all have already said, I do, it's not too late to go back and fix what wasn't already done. Yes, so we do mentoring online, counseling online. Reach out and look, GeraldAnyVet.com. Get some information on our mentoring, on our webinars. We have lots of resources. My book, Help for the Help Me. Lots of things on our website. And if you can get to the Tallahassee area for the boot camp to get imparted into, stirred up, the Help Me boot camps are our way of being able to get to you know various areas where we have a lot of followers, where we have our spiritual weapons arsenal training, our SWAT team, um, our SWAT team SWAT. members. Boots to the ground. Boots our SWAT team ground. members are learning how to fight for their family. They're learning how to use their weapons of warfare. So we're trying to get to areas where we can lay hands on them, impart into them. We love, love, love them. We love all of you, but we are trying to get to places where we can we can really teach and train them. So they're getting teaching and training online, and then we're trying to get to each one of them to lay hands on them, to really stir them up and impart into them. If you want information about our mentoring, our counseling, or any of our resources, please go to GeraldAnyVet.com. Also follow us, Gerald and Yvette Ministries. Did you want to share anything, Benton? I think you guys have done an awesome job of <laughs> delivering this message. Just remember that we're on all social media outlets. Yes. You can um, look at a lot of our mess our broadcasts on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. Um, like she said, Facebook, um, Gerald and Yvette Ministries, or Yvette Benton, or Gerald Benton, and Dr. Cuba. Yes. So DrQBeyond.com. There you, there you go. go. Dr. Cubion on all the social media outlets. There you go. There you go. So we also stir up ministry gifts in part to make sure that people are developing in their, not just their marriage. Uh, the mentoring is developing your ministry gift, but you can't really develop your ministry gift effectively. It would all kind of hurt with all kind of um, areas of your life where you need to be delivered. So we work on that first. And then because of that, your ministry gifts are, are, are almost magnified after you get deliverance. 
And so, you know, we're just we're just excited about what God is truly doing. So will you close us out in prayer? Yes. <laughs> God. Yes, come on and pray. <laughs> That's why pray. I said Look, it's please pray. Not a Someone said Glory said please pray for her. So we'll we're praying for Glory um today and we're praying for all of you. So Lord, we thank you for this awesome, awesome opportunity. We want to seal what was done here today with the blood of Jesus. We decree and declare that the enemy will not come and steal this word, that this word will be planted in good soil. Father, I thank you that as they leave this broadcast and they go forth, Father, that you will continue to speak and affirm and confirm for them, Father. Those that have been questioning whether or not they should come, Father, I thank you that tonight served as confirmation for those help meets that are saying that it is time current help meets and those that are preparing for their role as a help me because the word says that he that finds a wife mm. finds a good thing so when he finds you you're already mm. a help me Come on. god i thank you for the work that you are doing and bringing people together that it is wedding season and you are reconciling marriages father i thank you for what is happening here. I just, again, God, I just plead the blood of Jesus over everybody under the sound of our voices, those that are live and watching by replay. And I thank you that their lives will never be the same after watching this broadcast. God, I thank you for those that are going to enroll and take up, take power, take their power back, exercise their authority, and begin to kick some demon booty and Come get on. their lives in order. We Come thank on. you, God. For the angels yes. that are being dispatched, we thank you for the yes. revelation and what you are showing people through this broadcast. And yes. I thank you for the Bentons. I plead the blood of Jesus over them, yes. over their ministry, and over their marriage. And I pray, Father, for an increase, has your protection around them as they go about doing your work. And we seal this with the blood of Jesus and decree and declare that not one word shall fall to the wayside. Yes. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 So we didn't do a declaration and we don't want to stop until Ooh. we do a declaration because we know that you were made for more. We know that God has more for you. I am more. Made for so more. you got to say it. I am made, made for, for more. more. I yes. am made for more. So if that's on, your, your current situation, that's the situation that you're getting ready to get into. Yes. You are made for more. So don't Come let on. the enemy tell yes. you anything. Let me see it. Outside of that, you were made for more. more. Wherever you I are now, God wants to do more. exceeding abundantly above up. all we could ever ask or think. So you were made for more. Yes. We were made for more. You yes. were made for more. Your marriage was made for more. Yes. Your future yes. marriage was made for more. Get Dang. yourself in a situation where you truly believe yes. I was made for more. You know and understand that you were made for more. Yes. And we, we lift up Gloria or glory. We thank you, Lord God, for her, her yes. marriage and those Jesus. things that whatever it is she is in need of, yes. Lord, bless her in a mighty way. We thank you for every individual that's declaring I am yes. made for more. Yes. God, show them that you are the God of more. You yes. are the God that is the God of breakthrough, the God of miracles, yes. the, the God of signs, the God of wonders, and a God of reconciliation. You are a God that yes. wants to do more and more and more, and we will not stand in your way, God. We are going yes. to do everything we can to line up so that we can have the more that you want to pour on to us. Amen. We thank you all for joining us. Please share the broadcast. Don't forget to share the broadcast. We thank you for tuning in and yes. we will see you sometime this week. We will do a broadcast. Put on your notifications. If you're in the Florida, South Georgia, South Alabama area, wherever you are, get to Tallahassee, get to our website so you can get more information. Yes. We appreciate you. We were made for more. You were made for more. Your marriage was made for more. And Amen. remember, marriage works if you work it. it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm too young. Nah. I love a love. I love a love a love. Yes, I like that. Wait, some are throwing in their spouse's name, saying they are made for more. So not only yes. are you made for more, yes. but your spouse is made for more. Prophesy. And I like Dang. that prophesy. Come your on. spouse is Prophetic made for more. words. Come on, give them up. Made for put them up there real quick. Let's go. Oh my God. Come yes. on. Yes. If you're not married, put your your husband is made for more or your wife is made for more. Put your yes. husband's name Come or your on. wife's 
just Amen. leave. If you're already married, we'll take the time to let you declare it in this atmosphere. I am made for more. My husband is made for more. Yvette is made for more. Gerald is made for more. Yes. Put your names down. My future Anything. Come on. Yes, they are made for more. Come on. There more. we go. There we go. There you go. Prophetic I love act. That. Let's go. Let's yes, go. Put yes. them in. Made for more. Made Come on. for more. Yes, made yes. for more. Yes. And not only do you type it, but I want you to decree it until you believe it. I want yes. you to decree it until you see it yes. manifesting. One of the things that God told me to do was learn how to declare over my king Come and on. wait and, and continue to declare. Don't declare today. Come see on. some type of behavior and stop. You keep declaring until you believe it. And right. then you keep declaring until you see it manifest. Come Don't on. stop. Come until on. you see the manifestation of what God has said or what God has promised or right. what you see in the word. Don't let the enemy stop you. Don't let the enemy slow you down. Right. You decree, you declare what God said. Don't worry about what the enemy said. You concentrate on what God said. So I Come love that, yes. that we are putting in, yes. yeah, that we are made for more and our spouses are made for more. So thank you yes. for participating, joining, and sharing the broadcast. Amen. Amen. Have a good I love evening. It. I love it. I love it. I love it.